Woo! <sighs> G'day friends. Today we're diving into long exposure landscape photography. After this quick tutorial, you'll have all the know-how and all of the steps to capture dark scenes like the night sky, cityscapes, or even the Milky Way. We'll also, in the second half, go through all of the steps to capture those silky smooth waterfalls you see, or to capture the ocean crashing against the rock and make it all silky smooth. Mastering long exposure techniques can take your photography to new heights. So grab pen and paper and let's get into it. So, first up, you'll need a camera that has manual settings. Ideally, a DSLR or mirrorless camera and a tripod. The camera must have manual settings so that you can control the settings as much as possible and the tripod is there to hold the camera perfectly still while you're exposing your photograph. Now, there's a bunch of other things you can get, but these are the minimum, and these are the only things you really need to get long exposure photography underway. Now, it's very important to have a grasp on these next few factors. The exposure triangle is a fundamental concept in photography. It explains the relationship between three key elements, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. Understanding how these three components work together is essential, absolutely essential, for achieving well exposed photographs. Now, we're gonna dive into each one of those and explain those in depth. Aperture refers to the size of the opening in the lens through which the light enters the camera. It is measured in f-stops, with a smaller f-stop indicating a larger aperture. For example, f2 is very wide, and a larger f-stop indicates a smaller aperture. For example, f16. Aperture not only controls the amount of light entering the camera, but it also affects the depth of field. Depth of field is the area of the image sharp and in focus. The wider the aperture, smaller the f-stop number, results in a shallower depth of field, ideal for portraits, isolating a subject in the background. In contrast, a narrower aperture, as in a larger f-stop number, increases the depth of field, makes more of the landscape in focus. This kind of aperture is suitable for landscapes and architecture photography, and long exposure photography in a certain way. We'll get to that. Now, shutter speed. Shutter speed refers to the length of the time the camera shutter remains open. It allows the light in to reach the camera sensor. It is measured in seconds or fractions of a second. For example, one over a thousand, one one hundredth, or say one second. A faster shutter speed freezes motion and is useful for capturing fast moving subjects, such as sports, wildlife photography. Conversely, a slower shutter speed allows for a longer exposure time, resulting in motion blur and we often use that to convey a sense of movement, such as capturing flowing waterfalls, or to capture dark scenes, make light trails, capture cityscapes, even the night sky. Next up, we have ISO. ISO is the sensitivity of the camera sensor. A lower ISO, for example, ISO 100, is less sensitive to light and produces images with less noise. This is ideal for shooting in bright conditions when maximum image quality is desired. On the other hand, increasing the ISO, for example, 800 or higher, boosts the sensor sensitivity, allowing for faster shutter speeds, better performance in low light situations, long exposures. However, higher ISO settings also introduce more noise into the image, which can degrade the image quality. So it's important to strike a balance between sensitivity and image quality based on what you're shooting. In summary, the exposure triangle illustrates how adjusting one element, say the aperture, shutter speed, or ISO, affects the overall exposure of an image. By manipulating these settings creatively, photographers can achieve desired exposures, while also controlling the depth of field, motion blur, image noise, all of these things to capture stunning photographs in various lighting conditions. Now, pause the video here, draw out this exposure triangle. Drawing it out will help lock it into your brain for you to refer to when you're out shooting and for the rest of the video. Now that the basic terms are covered, let's go over the different reasons to use long exposure in photography. For example, to capture dark scenes or to capture motion. Let's start with dark scenes. Taking long exposure photographs at night can yield stunning results. Now, we're gonna go through all of the steps to set up your camera to make sure that you're successful when going out and taking shots. This is gonna take patience and practice and taking many photographs until you get the settings right for the conditions. Let's dive into the steps of creating your first long exposure photograph. The tripod. Stability is crucial for long exposure photography. 
Using a sturdy tripod will keep your camera steady throughout the exposure, preventing motion blur or a sh camera shake, which will ruin the entire image. Once your camera's locked on, switch it to manual mode. In manual mode, you're gonna have full control over the settings. This allows you to adjust the aperture, the shutter speed, and the ISO. We're gonna start with aperture. Open your aperture as wide as possible. So the lower the number, the better. If you've got an F2, great. F3.5 or four also will do the job. The wider the aperture, the more light we can let into our sensor. Now, yes, yes, it will decrease the depth of field, but most of the time when you're shooting these kind of things, you're gonna be focused on infinity. We'll get to focusing in a second. Shutter speed. Determining the appropriate shutter speed for your desired effect. This is gonna take most of the practice. Since you're aiming at long exposure shots, set a lower shutter speed to allow more time for the light to come in through the lens and onto your camera sensor. Depending on the scene and the available light, shutter speed is gonna range from anywhere from a half a second to hours. For the basics though, we're going to range from about a half a second to 30 seconds. Okay, so ISO. We're gonna start with a medium range kind of ISO of about 800. It's a good base to just kind of like test your image and see what you're working with. Okay, after you've set your shutter speed, your aperture and your ISO, we're gonna look at focus. In low light conditions, autofocus may struggle to lock onto a subject. Now, switch your lens to manual focus mode and we're going to adjust the focus ring all the way to infinity. If you don't have one of those, open up your screen and then hit the little, little button to zoom all the way in and find a light source. Maybe that's street light or a star. We're gonna zoom all the way into that and we're gonna manually adjust so that, that is an absolute pinprick. After that, we can either use a remote shutter or the camera's two second or 10 second timer, just so that when you hit the button, the camera doesn't shake just a little bit. All right, this is the most important part. You're gonna have to take multiple shots and different settings to experiment with the exposure times, the compositions and the creative effects you wanna achieve. Whether you have to increase your ISO or increase your shutter speed. Say if you wanted a shutter speed of a second, but it's too dark, you might have to bump the ISO. Kind of trying to find a balance between those. Honestly, just be patient and enjoy the process. Night photography requires lots of experimentation to achieve these results. Take your time, embrace the challenges, you'll have fun with it. I love, love being out in the dark and just playing with different settings and seeing what I can get. We're not shooting on film, you're shooting on digital, so just keep going until you find the right balance in that exposure triangle. We can also use long exposure photography to show motion around stationary things, like the ocean crashing into stationary rocks, or the clouds moving in the sky, maybe the water flowing down a waterfall. How much motion you want to capture is up to you. It will take some practice in adjusting the shutter speed, aperture, and ISO to find the perfect exposure and the amount of movement desired. But, uh, but that's half the fun. Let's walk through all the steps to set up your camera to shoot long exposures in the day or in blue hour. First of all, you wanna mount your camera securely on your tripod. Make sure it's sturdy and yes, yes, I've knocked my camera into a waterfall by not paying attention. Switch your camera to ma manual again so that you've got full control over your settings. Set your ISO to the lowest possible value this time. We wanna minimize the noise in the image and really desensitize the sensor. We're gonna choose a relatively small aperture, so a higher f-stop number, around f8 to 11, to increase the depth of field and ensure sharpness throughout the image, while also restricting the amount of light that enters the lens. After this, we're gonna adjust the shutter speed. Now, the key to capturing the silky smooth flow of the water is to use a slow shutter speed, obviously, long exposure photography. Start with a shutter speed of several seconds, example for like one to five seconds to begin with, Adjusting this is needed to try to achieve the effect you're going for. Longer shutter speeds of like 10 to 30 seconds will result in like more pronounced motion blur, while shorter speeds of like a half a second to a second will show less blur but more like detail in what is actually moving. This is just a personal preference, it's up to you, but uh, here are a couple of examples of different shutter speeds of the same waterfall to kind of give you an example of that. The use of filters. You can consider using a neutral density filter, like an ND filter. This reduces the amount of light entering the lens 
Again, it's kind of like sunglasses for your camera. Now this can help you really extend your shutter speed, even in really bright conditions. If you don't want to invest in a filter, aim to shoot these kind of scenes either early in the day or later in the day where there's less natural light. Now, when actually taking the shot, use a remote timer again, or the two second timer in your camera. This kind of, again, reduces camera shake and just make sure your image is completely tack sharp. After you've taken the image, obviously review and kind of, kind of adjust and really make it your own, whether it's you wanna have a long shutter speed and get that like really smooth, silky look to those images, or if you wanna just like, just capture a little bit of motion. It's entirely up to you, but you can do that with changing the shutter speed and then adjusting the other two according to the, the exposure triangle to match. Well, friends, hopefully that was super helpful and I'm sure you'll be able to take this information out into the field and create that magic for yourself. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Also, if you've made it this far and you haven't subscribed already, you probably should because there's going to be plenty more of this coming. I'll see you guys next week. Peace.